And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, today we're going to be taking care of all of the side projects and a whole bunch of industry and all the things we've been trying to do for so long, but couldn't because we didn't have access to them. First up, we're going to expand our tree population. Uh, there's one of them. Uh, we're going to plant those trees there. And we'll plant another one, say, here as well. That is the way we're going to space out the trees. Now, uh, we brought back with us seven seeds. So these seven seeds are going to get dispersed along here. Now you may be wondering, why are we willing to pay the water costs for these? It has to do with the way they generate seeds. It's really annoying, but these arbor trees, they don't really drop seeds when you harvest them. As in, when their branches grow and they have actually branches on them, and you harvest those branches, no seeds come out. The only way to get seeds out of an arbor tree is to wait until it matures, sprouts branches, and then a pip can rummage through it. Uh, so one of these pips can rummage through the, the tree. However, they can only rummage through it once. That's it. Once they've rummaged through it once, you can't get any more seeds. So what you have to do, I, I, I swear, I've tested this. You have to plant the trees, wait until they grow branches, pip rummages it, 50-50 chance of dropping a seed, and then after it's done that, you dig up the tree and plant it again. And you just keep doing that to generate seeds. That's the only way to get more seeds. So we're going to have to migrate some pips in here. And, oh, temperature's a bit low, isn't it? What do these need? 15 degrees? You know what? I do believe we have some heated, polluted water we can dump in there. Ooh, we're probably going to want to get that to flow a bit faster. One moment. We've had to install a few heaters. We can hopefully get the temperature up. Once it is and the water starts flowing, the water should provide the rest of the temperature regulation. We just need to get this to about 15 degrees. You know what? We might crank up the temperature down here to 20 just to be on the safe side. It'll cost us a little bit more power, but you know what? I'm. Uh, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make just to make sure our trees get started. We're going to have to come back very regularly and dig up the trees. What we've done here is stick in a farm station so we can double the growth, and the only thing we've left in here is grub grubs and some pips. Now the pips' job is to rummage the trees when they grow up, and the grub grubs are going to help give grub 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 rubs to the arbor trees and hopefully speed them along even further. We even moved the sweetles out just to be safe. Now while that is starting to warm up, I haven't put any temperature controls on this just yet. We, we need to rip those out before the trees grow up, otherwise it'll stifle the branches. We want to start putting in Atmosuit docks. We've got our hands on reed fibre. In fact, we might want to start plant planting some reed fibre. Actually, no. No, we don't need to plant any reed fibre just yet. I was thinking we stick in Atmosuit docks here, and we sort of seal in the base, and let these Atmosuit docks over here be the only way in and out. And I've been sort of preemptively squishing things down so that we can get around the outside of the base. It will be a little bit awkward, but I think we can make it work. Now all we need to do is stick together some Atmosuits. Uh, for that, we'll do it up here. We've got this battery bank up here running on a, a nice heavy heavy watt wire spine that means we can just keep throwing on transformers and dumping more and more power output as we need it it's just a it does mean our industry ends up near the top of the map but that's actually a good thing because the top of the map is so cold it makes doing industry so much simpler and oh my god would this place heat up already this is going to take forever or otherwise hmm well that could be a minor issue after a quick restart, everything's quite stable. Uh, this game has been very stable for me in general. It's one of the first crashes I've had in a while. Uh, we have got all of these planted, and I realized I don't need to keep them too far apart. The reason being, we don't care about the branches. All we care is that they grow, and they sprout at least one branch. That's all we need for them to get uh, rummaged by a pip. So at the moment, they're all in here with getting grub grub rubs and all sorts of things. So this one here is at 43%. It's got Farmer's Touch for 100% bonus, Grub Grub Rub for 50% bonus, meaning in one cycle, this thing will start spreading branches. And normally what I would do, I wouldn't go up to this length. I would just set a room aside with natural dirt tiles, dump a bunch of pips in it and a bunch of seeds, and let them plant the wild seeds. Come back every 20, 30 cycles, dig up all the trees and start it, and let the pips plant them again. And just keep doing that in the background for a couple of hundred cycles until I've got more than enough trees. But we want lots and lots of trees. These things are going to be able to... We can take them to another planet and use them to make things sustainable. Now with that done, we're going to go down over here and... Oh, we're feeding oxygen into this. This is going to be our Atmosuit docks. In fact, we can start delivering the suits now. Uh, you know, we'll get the first three in. Once this is full though, we're going to... Actually, you know what? We can start doing it now. We're going to start sealing the base in. I think we'll seal it off here at the top, and we'll seal it off here at the bottom, and seal off the sides. And then for everything outside of this core base, you'll have to go through Atmosuits and go out and dig everything out. In fact, most of the, the ice biomes have already melted, so yeah, let's dig a lot of it. Atmosuit ducks up and running. We now have the ability to demolish the map properly. Um, we will have to make a few changes here and there. Actually, let's put in a quick door system here. Well, it's not really that necessary, but what this will allow us to do, actually, we can just make it with a few 
blocks. It just means we can uh, control who goes in and out. For example, I don't want uh, Events in Horizon going in and out. We'll quick rename on them. Yeah. Events in Horizon just it rolls off the tongue, just that little bit simpler. Now, uh, yes, that was it. Uh, yeah, this has all got to go. Anything to do with chlorine has got to go. In fact, this whole map has just got to go. So maybe I've been digging just a little bit more than I intended to when I started, but it's just there's so many good resources here that needed claiming. Uh, the only thing I haven't dug up is the ice biomes, though oh, we really need to dig this out. There's so much good iron in there we want as well. But where is it? Ah, yes, our trees are getting a little bit out of control. Every so often we have to go through and dig them all up, but what are we up to by now? Um, a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 arbor seeds. I think we started with 7. So we'll dig those all up, and then we're going to plant them again. Uh, I'm not actually planting them right beside each other, it's the pips that are doing that somehow. All I do is I plant them pretty close together, but uh, actually, you know what? We can demonstrate it here, it'll only take a second. We just plant one right there. And then once that one's planted, we can go to the next one over, was it here? And plant that one there. And then so on and so forth. We actually overlap them just a little bit. You'll see that one there. And this one here can overlap just as well. And then we just go along and do this the whole way along, and then the pips sort of fill in the blanks. This is as good as I can get it. Uh, the pips sort of tend to fill in the rest, so we have about six units sitting around that they'll eventually get around to pl planting. Once they do, and they all grow, and yeah, they'll rummage through them again, and hopefully we'll get more seeds. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, we've dug, dug out that whole area. I think it's time we went down here and we took out the old biome. Yeah, or the Badlands biome. I want all of that iron. I have been waiting for so long to just rip all of that out. Unfortunately, though, there was not a lot of iron down there. There was only about four and a half tons of iron. I was a little bit disappointed, but we have located all the volcanoes. There's a volcano here, a volcano here, and a volcano here. We're going to need all three of those for renewable sand, it seems. There's no other source of renewable sand bar smashing up rocks, so I think we're going to have to start taming volcanoes just so that we can turn the get igneous rock out of them to make sand. Or I suppose we could make coal. No, not the same. Uh, I'm running a few stone hatches over here. I'm only actually running two unpowered incubators to keep them going, and they seem to be filling up these hatcheries quite nicely. Like, there's, they're almost maxed out just running two of them. I think it's just uh, the way we pull out the eggs. Otherwise, we have, we're have we generating a fair bunch of meat, and everyone's running on barbecue right now. But enough of that. We have Atmos suits, and what I've done is I dumped a few Atmos suits through the supply teleporter, teleporter input. That has sent it over to... Area. Area here has now got a little uh, atmosphere dock section built down here, and we are ready to take out the oil biome. Oil biome gives us oil, oil gives us some refined metals because we can put in an industrial brick. Yeah, let's just tear this place apart. Oh, wait, nope, nope, nope. We need to go back here, and we need to. Where is it? Is it old Venus? Yeah. I think we've got this filled. Yep, yeah, we've got a bunch of algae in here. We'll put in some more food. I need to revamp this place. We don't really need what we're going to put in atmosphere docks for the next leg of this. But for now, I think we'll just put in, say, 10 kilos of, where is it, berry sludge. That was it. Oh, Lord, half blind. All right, so we'll put in a bunch of berry sludge there. We'll make that a high priority. Once we have 10 kilos of that in, we can populate it with our three duplicates we're going to send across, and we'll just fly them over. We could use the teleporter, but the teleporter takes ages to recharge in between, and I'd rather get this done nice and quickly. As we're about to launch them into the rocket, it's a good idea maybe not to have them steal their Atmos suits from this planet. So, like, a little bit of management here. All I've done is I've stopped uh, the three we're trying to leave. Motherload, Keymaker, and Fruit Loops can't leave through this door, which is where the Atmos suits are. Instead, we're going to have them leave through this door. This will be the only door they're let out. So, oh, not Judy, and Fruit Loops. All of you three will be able to exit here. So they can get in and out through this door, and that way we can load them up in the rocket. Once all of them are loaded up, we'll launch them over, and we can finally tackle that oil biome. You really do have to wait a long time to get your hands on... Well, you don't have to wait a long time to get your hands on reed fibre. We could have went for the reed fibre a lot earlier with a smaller rocket. We didn't have to, uh, say, be as industrialised over here. We could have sent over one duplicate, just grabbed a, a few pieces of reed fibre and trees and went out of there. But, uh, just when recording these, I wanted to sort of focus on one planet at a time. Unfortunately, this episode, we can't. We've got to do multiple areas. So if we check inside here, how's everyone doing? Okay, you're all loaded up. You know what? Turn that on. We'll enable that so we can get some auction production going. We're going to allow you access to the bathrooms as well. And, oh, we're going to change your consumables so you can consume berry sludge. With that all done, it's time to launch you. Uh, 
Damn, there's no launch button from inside. Do you really have to go inside to launch them? That feels almost wrong. Ah, uh, yes, you do. Uh, yeah, we'll launch you. Bye bye. Come on, off you go. Uh, star map wise, if we head over here, this should only take 0.4 of a cycle. Well, this is a bit of a slow rocket. Which reminds me, we also got to go over here and we have to do the scanning as well. We're also going to need a rocket to travel out to the edges here and do scanning at that to try and uh, find the last three planets. But for now, we're just going to exploit these three planets, get in our industrial base sorted. And here arrives our duplicants. We'll get them to uh, finish this place up. There's just a... I'm putting in some gas piping here. Namely to help insulate this here. We're going to be pulling carbon dioxide out of the oil biome to help refuel any of future rockets. And that carbon dioxide is going to be very hot. So a little bit of insulated piping will help with that. Also a filtration system. We're going to pull all the gases out of the oil biome. We're going to be replacing it all with natural gas once we start venting those oil wells in there. Uh, down here, this is the atmosphere docks. We've got four of them because we've only got four duplicates on this planet. We're going to put in a bit of a liquid lock here, a double layer one, so we can vacuum seal this whole area. As it is, this planet is nice and cool. We'd, we'd rather leave the uh, living areas nice and cool. Though I think we're going to use that oil right there. This is going to be a str st fairly straightforward liquid lock. We're just going to pump, pump a bunch of crude oil in here. Eh, dig that out. Dig that out. And there we have a liquid lock with a vacuum seal in the middle. Uh, this is just one of those standard ones. It, it just means that none of the heat from inside here can ever get out. Because even if it gets into this oil, it can't get across to this oil to get it get its heat out. The only real connection between these two is this mafic tile, insulated tile here. It can transfer a little bit of heat from this side to the other, but realistically this could be five or six hundred degrees and almost no heat should get out the other side. Uh, maybe a little bit of an over precaution here, but I'd like to be safe rather than sorry. Now, what should we do with this oil biome? Oh, wait, I know what we should do with this oil biome. A little bit of demolition later, and this oil biome is not that bad. I had to dig, uh, when it came to the, oh, what do you call them, the sporch, sporkids, uh, the one that, uh, they give off those nasty germs. I just dug in from underneath them and knocked them out. Most of them had starved themselves of atmosphere by consuming all the carbon dioxide. And once they were all removed, it just was a simple case of demolishing everything. Now, this does mean we have some oil here with some z zombie spores in it. We might want to chlorinate that. I'm not sure if, if we burn that in a petroleum generator, is that going to spit out polluted water with sports, uh, zombie spores in it? I don't know. I don't think so, but it might be a good idea just to decontaminate this first. But we've got a few other things to do. One, we've got access to renewable sulfur now. We've got a liquid sulfur geyser over here, and that means we've got another liquid sulfur geyser over here. With both of those, if we can tap into those and tame them, now one thing, sulfur here, it stays at a liquid until it hits 115 degrees, meaning we can run this under a steam turbine and the steam turbine will cut it down to 125. We can maybe get down to about 120 if we're lucky, but it shouldn't solidify under a steam turbine. That means we pump it out and then hmm, we're probably going to want to find some way to cool it down, but the, the last bit of cooling is going to take an aqua tuner, which is going to require steel and a bunch of other stuff. So I think what we do first is we tap into some of these oil reservoirs, we start pumping that oil back to the home planet, I've already disconnected the ethanol. We're going to start pumping the crude oil in here, and then we're going to pump that crude oil back to the home planet so we can make plastic. The plastic we can turn into steam turbines, and the steam turbines we can use to start uh, taming, well, everything. All the heat-based stuff. If we check back on our home planet as well, we also have, was it, uh, volcanoes down here. Why is no one digging that out yet? Oh, never mind. There's a, a minor volcano over here, there's a second one over here, and there's a third one down there. So we've also got those to tame. And if we check out Tuperio, yeah, there's a bunch of volcanoes here as well that need to be tamed, uh, aluminum and something else. With all of those volcanoes to be tamed, I think it moves us to get straight into oil. Just, we got to rip all that stuff out and start shipping it home. We could put in a, a plastic production facility here, but I'd prefer not to. I want our industrial brick on our home planet. To make things easier around here, what we've done is we've placed, uh, well, we've bricked in all of these areas here. So any of these oil wells that start spewing out oil, the oil will fall over the side, roll down into our central tank, and our central tank will hook up to something like, well, a liquid pump, and they'll pump that all back to our home planet. Now, the water itself is going to get pumped down from the main tank and sent into these. Now, we're going to have to get renewable water back here, which means we're probably going to have to start pumping water from our home planet where we're burning this crude oil. Uh, that will get complicated. We'll worry about it later. And this here, this here is just a way of uh, getting all the the slicksters out of the way. These slicksters down here have a tendency to end up drowning themselves when they go under layers of liquid. It just, it's an annoyance. So we're going to dump them all in there. They're not accessible right now, but we'll get around to them later. 
First off, uh, let's just hook up all this water. Along with the water, we're going to need a few other things. Uh, for example, there's the water coming in from up there. That's fine, but we're also going to need power. Power we've had to plug in from... I haven't actually connected it just yet, but that's coming all the way from our solar up top, which is connected up to our battery banks. We're going to need to get cooling on them shortly. They're almost hitting 30 degrees. Uh, as well as that, we're going to put in a little bit of automation. So down here, if the pressure is below 500 kilos, yeah, that's fine. Oh, damn it. That liquid pump is made of iron ore. We're going to have to make that liquid pump out of either steel or actually gold amalgam. I think we brought some gold amalgam with us, so that should be fine. We'll make the liquid pump out of that. That gold amalgam pump there is what's going to pump all of that liquid right back into there. And that will send it back to our home planet. Now, our home planet has not quite been configured yet. Uh, I've moved, where is it, the ethanol out of the way. So the ethanol has now been uh, just moved off to the side because we don't want that. And we have to decide where we're going to put this. I'm thinking we make our industrial brick down here close to the oil biome that way we can run the oil the moment we're finished with our industrial brick and we've got it up and running we can take any excess well we'll take the oil and we'll start shunting it down here and we'll put in a petroleum boiler tapped into this magma so we'll make a, a geothermal petroleum boiler that should be it so i'm thinking right about here yeah yeah but we still have a few things to finish off just one or two once all of this uh, is finished up we can start it up and see how it works all the prep work's been completed, all that is left is to hook up the power. Now once the power hooks up, the oil wells should turn on. Uh, oil wells are going to start spewing out oil. Now this is going to eat into our power reserves quite a bit. I mean, normally this is very intermittently used, the power up here, so I'm pretty sure once the power goes out for them, I'm not sure if these batteries are going to last us the whole time. But we can supplement the power later, once we've got uh, everything else sorted. That's going to start up the oil wells, they're going to spit out 3.333. Yep, a, a third of... A third of 10 kilos, let's say. That will start filling this up. Now, the reason we're filling them up to here and letting them overflow is if you don't, the water can boil inside the machines. It's just, well, it used to be able to. I don't know if they've changed it. But uh, the water in there, you'll see it's, it changes temperature. And if you vent the natural gas, which is extremely hot, while there's still water in it and it's not in some sort of liquid like crude oil, it has a tendency to heat up the oil well, which soaks into the water, which flashes the water to steam, and then you end up with steam in your oil biome, and you're like, why is there steam in my oil biome? And then you spend hours trying to figure it out. But this time, no. no we fill it up to there, that way the oil overflows off the edge, the oil wells remain stabilized below 100 degrees so the water doesn't boil in them. Gas-wise, we do have a little bit of contamination up here in polluted oxygen. We've got some sour gas down the bottom. But I'm thinking when it comes time to pump this out, we'll just put a gas pump in the middle, set it to a pressure sensor, and that sour gas and that oxygen up there can all stay in there doing nothing. And for the time being, let's just fast forward this. We need, uh, we're going to wait until that gets up to there. Once this starts overflowing, it should shut off once it's hits 500 kilos. And I think at that point, we're pretty much, well, this, most of this area automated. I just want to keep an eye on this and make sure that our power doesn't degrade during the night. Looks like we already went through a night cycle and the batteries did survive it. Okay. That's good to know. We can always, once our industrial brick is up, we'll probably extend this on. Lots of solar is, well, effectively free power. And put in a cooling solution for the batteries is very cheap. We'll just need an aqua tuner, a steam turbine. It's more complicated to build than it is to run. All right, let's give this 10, well, let's give this 10 or 20 minutes to fill up. We have already managed to get our oil right up to here, but that was actually pouring some of the this loose stuff that was lying around. We also have a bunch of petroleum I'm going to have to collect, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. We just want to get things sorted here. Uh, Power-wise... I'm going to upgrade all the power in this base with conductive wire. The reason being, I just realized we have 257 tons of lead, and lead is excellent for making conductive wire, especially when you don't have to care about high temperatures like rocketry and stuff like that. So we're just going to have a, a quick redo of all of that in here, and once that's all done, we can we can evacuate this place. Well, we can send our, our just demolition crew onto the next planet, or back to our home planet. The oil is already pumped up there, ready to go, and the sensor is already in place. Yeah, so just give us five minutes. Oh! One other thing we need to do, I'm going to uh, extend on these solar panels a couple of chunks. The uh, reason being, when this is working flat out, the batteries don't quite recharge fully during the day. So over a long enough period of time, the batteries would eventually run dry. So I'm thinking we put in about two more solar panels. We can bring in the glass from our home planet. I have been taking my time at this, but dear lord if we haven't got this place solid now. That's an expansion of the solar by just adding more glass in. And uh, the glass we dumped in over here from our home planet. In fact, we're going to sweep that up. And we're going to export a bunch of that lead back home. All we're going to do is, uh, you know, we don't need to allow manual use for the moment. I think we sent back all the pincher row eggs. That's why we had that ticked. We wanted all the pincher rolls sent back home, but that can go. Uh, what else did we have? Edible? Oh, we were sending the bristleberries back home. You know what? We'll, we'll let that go as well. Uh, organic? What were... Oh, we sent back all the algae as well. Well, that's all gone, so it doesn't really make a difference. But... 
refined metals. Lead it is. We're going to have all the lead. And the auto super should take care of all of that, and we're going to start shipping that lead back to our homeworld. That's going to do all of our wiring back home. You know, I feel like I should take the pug plug slugs, but I'm not sure I even want them, to be honest. I haven't really found a use for them still, and I suppose worst case scenario, you know what? We will just print them out, eventually they'll die and turn into meat at some point. In here we have just left in poke shells, hatches, anything that's shown up, we just sort of leave them there. Maybe we'll find use for them, maybe we won't, but worst case scenario, they will actually provide us with meat. Uh, where is our drop-off? Our drop-off is over here, and we should have lead showing up on this section. Let's actually see how much we've got. We can redo our entire power infrastructure with this at a later date. For now, though, we've got 1,800 kilos and rising. I think it's time we brought our team home. Everything here is, seems to be sorted. Oil is sorted. The only person We're leaving one person behind. Their job will be to man all of these and uh, vent the the oil wells when the time comes. And why is there no power to the oil wells? Turns out it was the power bridges. I had uh, not installed them all. <laughs> yeah, you, can only, you can't overlay those. You have to actually build them manually. So I had to delete the old ones and then replace them. Once that's in, yeah, we're golden. We can now start the oil flowing. Right. Time to go back home and build ourselves an industrial brick. Their mission complete to, I don't know, demolish the oil biome and get everything here sorted. We'll send our team back home. Uh, once they go home, their plan will be to build our industrial brick. I kind of do like having just three dupes that do all the main labor. Uh, poor Travaldo here is left behind. His job is to Actually, we can get rid of a bunch of this food now. We don't need it anymore. He only needs about five, so we'll just demolish all of that. Their job is just to stay here and, well, tidy the place up. We did a big sweep before we left, but I think there's still a little bit more they'll have to keep doing. So sweeping, venting the oil wells, and uh, that's about it. There's nothing really else left to do here. Anyway, let's get back home. Rocket returned. Crew all sorted. Actually, do we need to change it? I think we can leave the crew that way, doesn't make a difference, and we can just lock the toilets in here so no one gets back in. And disable this. Now the reason I disable that building is it gets kind of hot in here otherwise. That battery, if that battery battery's constantly on, there's nowhere to vent the heat in this section. Uh, at some point we'll have to demolish this and rebuild it, but for the time being... Oil. Precious, precious oil. I'm thinking right about here it needs to be demolished. This will be our standard issue industrial brick. We're going to have our steam room up here where we're going to delete all our heat. Steam turbines clamped on top. Then very top row here is going to be metal refinement. Not, we're not going to make this too huge though. The metal refinement we need shouldn't be too excessive. Oh, uh, where is it? Ceramic. Yes, I've been making ceramic on the side. That, ooh, that is one thing I should cover. That was a question that came up repeatedly. Nose cones. Yes, this nose cone on this. Uh, you can make those quite handily, but you do need... Ah, where is it? One second, I just have to deconstruct this module so that we can do it. Uh, where is it? Basic nose cone? Oh, fine, we'll put it on a spacefarer module, and then on top of that, we can put on the nose cone. Uh, one second. With the nose cone gone and a spacefarer module in place, we now get the option to build the basic nose cone. Now, the basic nose cone requires insulation. At first, you're going to think it requires the actual insulation. Insulation, the stuff, the very end game material. No, ceramic's good. So you can use ceramic for that. This question came up a few times in the comments, so yes, if you need to want to build one of those nose cones and it's saying you can't do it because you don't have insulation, just build some ceramic. Ceramic is built very easily by just, uh, where is it? Yeah, kiln. To build ceramic, all you need is clay and coal. Done. You've got yourself some ceramic. Very simple to do. And we're also going to be using that ceramic to build ourselves our metal refineries, just to give them a higher melting point. It doesn't really matter too much, to be honest, but having an overheat point of over 200 degree, 275 can come in useful if you do uh, um, any mistakes later on. But before we do this, we're going to need some steel. Uh, Steel-wise, we're going to have to make a uh, sort of a jerry-rigged steel refinement facility. And we're going to build it in here in the back of our stone hatch little base. This is the simplest and most straightforward way of making refined metals. You grab yourself your metal refinery, you clamp it down somewhere near a source of chill, basically a polluted water vent or some sort of cold slush geyser, or even just a big pool of slushy water. Whatever you can find that is absolutely cold. Then all you do is you pump a bunch of it into your metal refinery and do your refinement. And the thing is, this is not, well, with a, a geyser it's sustainable, but you can't really ignore it. You have to micromanage it occasionally because otherwise your water's going to overheat and eventually you'll start melting something. That's why we want to get into steam turbines. So we're going to use this to just get ourselves our basic steel, a uh, few couple of tons of stuff that will help us iron out the early problems. The reason for the two coal generators is, well, we have about 300 tons of coal because we've been running hatches for God knows how long at this point. Uh, we're using a conductive wire here that'll support up to two kilowatts. 
power wise this drains 1.2 and we have two 600 watt coal generators so the coal generators we will keep up as well as that we've got a little bit of automation going on here between the smart battery just to make sure that they don't overburn coal and that's it uh, water comes in from down here we're actually siphoning it off our crop lines I made a mistake earlier and uh, dug up all our crops because we didn't need them anymore. Unfortunately, that caused our bathrooms to back up. But if you don't do that at least once a game, you're not actually playing. <laughs> so I planted down some reed fibre and a few bog buckets to make sure that we have something to drain our toilet water into. Anyway, with all that done... Oh, no, you're going to be set to 90-60. We should be good to get going the moment someone fills in that pipe. Come on. Thank you, Weaver. You're a legend. Right, we just need steel. Oh! Refined carbon, that was it. Uh, let's grab ourselves some refined carbon. We don't need that much for now. We'll just say... Yeah, that's enough of it. We're going to need that refined carbon to make steel. Steel requires refined carbon, iron, and lime. Lime we have about a ton of. Literally 1,095 kilos. So just over a ton. Excellent. And once that's ready, we can start making steel. Uh, considering the amount of resources we have... You know what, let's make that... We'll make about 20 pieces of steel. That should be more than enough... No, let's make 25. That 25 pieces, 2.5 tons of steel should be more than enough to get us started. And it shouldn't drive up the temperature of a polluted water pool too much. And do remember, this polluted water, it, we're actually having to pay electricity to heat it up down here anyway. So it's not that big a deal if it gets a little warm. Just as long as it doesn't get hot enough to kill our crops. In the background, I still have been uh, planting and ripping up these arbor trees. We've got 36 seeds in storage. And we've got how many plants down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more trees ready to go. Now we're going to be mass planting while planting a bunch of those later. And this is just one of those things I like to do in the background to get them all prepped. So there's a lot of prep work going on while all of this other stuff is happening. Looking at the amount of steel we had, I, I was like, wait, we can't have made that much steel that quickly. I remembered that we had deconstructed a rocket uh, chimney up here. A rocket silo. Ah, damn it. Rocket nose cone. Those nose cones are full of steel. Uh, so if we check down here, I think, yeah, we ended up with 2.4 tons of steel from that. That was an accident. Um, never mind, never mind. We've got, we'll have more than enough steel out of this shortly. Once we have about 5 tons, I'll say, we'll, we'll, we'll just pretend that 2.4 tons didn't exist, doesn't exist. Even after all the heat this steel dumps into it, it's what, 46 degrees? So it's coming in at minus 9, coming in at 46. We dump it down here and... Yeah, I stick. We're not even cracking the zero degree mark. I think I think we're good. There goes our final piece of steel. That'll bring us up to about four point nine tons of steel. I think that's good enough. Uh, you know what? We'll just sever the piping now on this. We don't need that anymore. All oh, that excess water should flow back down in here and into the uh, into the plants. Uh, how are you doing up there? You are pretty much empty. Actually, we can deconstruct all of this. Actually, we'll leave it there just in case we need it. Instead, we'll be down over here and we'll finish this off. First thing though is... Actually, what time is it? Ah, okay, okay, I'm running out of time. Um, one second, we'll just, uh, just, we'll get the, we'll just show the basics of it anyway. This here will be where we'll be sticking our aqua tuner. That will be providing our cooling for our steam turbines on top. And this will be where we're putting our metal refinement. But I think we'll put in the plastic first. We'll at least get the plastic done now and run the oil down to it. That should only be a two minute job. And with the plastic, we can use that to make our steam turbines. Uh, I think we'll put the plastic over this side and maybe put it on top of some mesh tiles. Plast uh, the plastic press, you'll notice here it gives off steam. So you get plastic, steam, carbon dioxide and heat. An awful lot of heat. The main thing we're worried about though is that steam. That's going to be an annoyance. It's going to start uh, pooling up. So I think we'll leave this right about... Oh, there is fine. You know what? We'll put in two of them. In fact, we'll make them both out of steel. Do you have the... Yeah, we have the spare steel to make it. Oh, and if you're wondering, the reason I don't, uh, or the reason I didn't want to use the steel we got out of the nose cone capsule is just, it, it's sort of cheating doing it that way. It's free steel, and steel is just so useful. Uh, steel can be used to make just about anything. For example, metal tiles can be made out of steel. Uh, mesh tiles can usually only be made out of ores, but they can also be made out of steel. So that's another thing it's good for. Same with airflow tiles. Uh, manual airlocks can also be made out of steel, while they normally can only be made out of... Uh, uh, ores no, otherwise mechanized airlocks same thing so it's just about everything that can normally be made out of only ore can also be made out of steel so if you can just mass produce steel it's it's just so so useful and the ability to create and destroy rockets to produce vast quantities of it is just a massive bug that needs to be fixed at some point uh but yes before i was wondering yeah we need to put crude oil in here oh wait that means we're going to need to make ourselves a little uh a little area down here to burn off the oil one moment. We need to take the crude oil that comes in and convert it to petroleum, so we're going to put ourselves a little oil refinery down here. 
Later on, we'll throw in a petroleum boiler, but for now, all we want is enough to get our plastic and our st steam turbines up and running. That's pretty much all we need for. We don't even need it for power. We're going to use solar for that. Well, solar and a little bit of coal to start off. Quick note, a uh, very important one. If you ever are uh, trying to get good stuff out of the gate, you need to print it first. So, for example, we have not been offered any steel yet out of the gate by cycle 519 because we just didn't make any. However, a good idea would maybe be to chuck out a one piece of steel early on because the gate will then start offering it to you. I think you have to be about cycle 80 or 100 or something. But we are now getting offered steel for the first time ever. It's just good to know. So my advice would be probably maybe pump out a little steel early on. I never bothered, but it, it would m make sense, monetarily speaking. With the power brick in place, this is just going to be our starter power. Uh, with that in place, we need the plumbing to win. So the oil is going to come all the way down here from another asteroid. Oh, how much how much lead have we got? We're up to 119 tons. I think we can turn off the lead coming from there. We don't really need that coming in anymore. One second. However, I think I will take all their diamond. The diamond is very useful for uh, for something, so we'll definitely take that. Also, all the poke shell malts can go, and they do have some things that can be ground up. They should have some sedimentary rock. I think we'll take that too. Yeah, we'll take all your sedimentary rock as well. Hmm, this place is turning into be a nice little... A nice little resource source. Now, uh, where were we? Ah, yes, plastic. We'll just get plastic sorted for today at least and feel like we've got something done. The oil is finally flowing from our colony planet, and now we're going to use that to fill this liquid lock. And while well, that's going on, actually, let's start draining this area out. This place is going to get filled up with natural gas, and we want to make sure we have somewhere to burn it off in. We finally managed to vacuum this place out. Had to wait a little time. It just it was mixed gases, so it got really annoying sucking it all out. But once it's all gone, we can now not worry about that mixing with whatever natural gas is going to appear in there. Uh, the problem with dealing with oil refineries is if the pressure in there goes above 5 kgs, it will stop producing oil. Uh, the reason being it's just the, it's the way it's engineered. So we start the oil flowing in there, and now someone's going to have to run this. Oh, which reminds me we should put in the automation wires. Let's go with lead. I think we're going to need to put in a knot gate here. Alright, I think the way this goes is we're going to set this to 95. Uh, we'll say 50%. So if that's below 50%, goes below 50%, it'll ask for the oil refinery to turn on. Once it hits 95%, it'll tell the oil refinery to turn off. That should stop our people from spending all their time standing here. And just if you don't do that, what they have a tendency to do is produce a little bit of oil. Then after they've produced a little bit of oil, the tank will fill, at which point it'll stop back up and the oil refinery will switch off. Then they'll walk away 10 steps and then the oil refinery will go, oh no, wait, no, someone used a little bit, come back. And it just, you end up with people bouncing back and forth. And that's the plastic production started soon come on give us the it should show up here as new resource every time you get a new resource it shows up here as nope nope there we go plastic 60 kilos perfect and this has already produced a little bit of natural gas and it does have zombie spores in it right okay then so hmm oil that does come in with zombie spores will produce natural gas with zombie spores does that mean the water is going to come out with zombie spores Hmm, that worries me a little bit. Just, just a tad. But I think we're definitely out of time for today. Uh, this, we'll finish this off to Thursday, that's it. So Thursday is the next episode. Thursday we will be finishing off the metal refinement. Then we're also going to put in some rock crushers. We'll maybe cut down on the kilns. This is just to get us enough ceramic to get this started. We may not need four metal refineries up here, but I thought we'd just put the prep work in place. If we need them, we need them. Otherwise, no, if we don't, we'll just cut them out. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed our little attempt at getting all of our planets organized. Right now, we've just got these two really sorted, and this one over here, Topario or whatever, we don't really need anything from it anymore. I mean, we could go back and grab some of the metal ores and things, and we'll probably get an automated rocket to bring things back and forth. Hopefully they're all, the updates that they bring out will allow more automated rocketry, because I want to be able to like, automate something to come out here, pick up the gold from the gold volcanoes and the aluminum from the aluminum volcanoes, bring that back, all without any interaction. As it is, currently it seems to need to do a lot of manual work to get that to happen correctly. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here before I ramble some more, and uh, good luck.